Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. You're watching Indigo Tech Tutorials. If you're new here, please press that like and subscribe to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to build an app like X where users are gonna be able to sign up for new accounts and then tweet their thoughts to share it with the world. Then other users can like and then also retweet the post. This is gonna be a really cool app to build and I hope you guys are excited. So without further ado, let's go right into the video. Okay, I'm just gonna get right into this. Let's open up the terminal. Actually, I'm going to make sure I zoom in on the terminal so you can see the commands that I'm doing. Because I don't think that it was able to be seen in the last videos very well. But I'm going to type in Rails New X. And then I'm going to pass in the database as PostgreSQL. And I'm going to use CSS. I'm going to use Tailwind CSS for the framework. Now we can CD into this and I'll just start up the server. Now we're going to be able to view it on localhost 3000. We're going to need to create the database. And now we're at the Rails screen. So that means that everything's set up and we're ready to start developing in our app. So the first thing that I want to add is just a simple landing page. So to do that, we can go back into the console and I'm going to generate a controller for that. So I'll type in Rails G controller pages, and then I'll have a home action. Now that we've generated that, uh, we can go ahead and start the server, but I'm gonna open up the code now in Visual Studio. So now if we open up the config folder and the routes to RB, I'm going to set the root of the application. So I'll delete what got added for with the generator, and I'll instead change the root down here and set it to pages home. Now, if we go back and we refresh, we'll see that now we're on the home page and we can go and customize that text. So if I open the app folder, go into views, and I'll change this. It's going to be RX. Tweet your thoughts on the internet. And then I'm going to add some. I'll add some basic styling, center this div, but it looks like I need to delete this container that was added with the CSS uh, generator, that's fine. I'm gonna add a bit of padding. Anyways, we have X, tweet your thoughts on the internet, and then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add the user model and I'm going to add sign in. It's a thing that makes that really easy is a device gem. So I'll show you how quick that is. You can do bundle add device. That adds the gem that we can do rails g device colon install. And then from there, we just have to copy the alerts and go and put it inside of our app. So right in the application layout, render partial that goes to the layouts alerts and we can create a file in that layouts folder called underscore alerts .html.erb, and that'll make the partial so now we have the alerts set up but i also want to do the rails g device views generator so i can override the styling because i'll show you in a second what the default styling looks like but it's not very good so then on that homepage, I'm going to add a link to sign in. So we'll just say sign in, and then this is going to go to new user session path, which actually we don't have this yet because I forgot we have to do one more part. So now that we generated the views and we set up the rest of the device, we need to generate the model. So for that, we do Rails G device, and then the name of the model, which we're going to call it user. So we can generate that user. And then we'll have to migrate the database. And then actually another thing that we're going to add to the user real quick is we're going to add the username. So for that, I'm just going to do a new migration by doing Rails G migration, add username to users, and then username, I'm going to just add it here. So it'll be type string. And then when I do this migration command, it actually 
creates the migration for us. So if you do it how I did it, where you use this type of naming and then you just put the name of the column, it'll generate it correctly. And it's using type string for the username. Now we can migrate this and we have users. So we can start up the server and now we'll see the sign-in link, which actually I'm gonna do a little styling. Okay, sign in, and now you'll see this is what the default styling looks like. So it's kind of all over here, and I just want it to be centered, but that's pretty easy. I've done this in other tutorials, but because we did the, the views generator, now we have the views inside of our app. So we can go to the device folder, and let's start in the sessions new, which is the login page. I'm just gonna center these. So I'm gonna add a max width, and then I'm going to add margin. This should already get it centered a little bit, but now I want to add some padding. And also we can do flex call and center it, the items inside of this div. And then that gives this type of look. And we can also add a background color. So I have a background and actually I want to change the padding to margin. So now it's pad margin, then we're going to need to add a little bit of our own padding as well, just like this. And it already looks a little bit better. We can even do some rounded. Now we have this basic login page. We can bring the same thing over to the registration page by just copying that div, opening registration, and then wrap this whole bit of code. Make sure to add the ending div. And now when you click both of these, you're gonna get the correct looking view. And the other thing I'm gonna add actually is, so right now we log in with email, but we're gonna to wanna to log in with email or username. And also when we sign up, we wanna be able to set a username. So to change that, let's go to the registrations form right here. And we're going to add another field. So I'm just gonna copy this to make it easy, but we, we can't use email fields. We need to do text fields. And for username. So now we're gonna be able to set that email and username right when we sign up. I'm gonna go ahead and sign up for a new account and just make sure that this works. So I'm gonna go into the console by doing rail C and I'll check that last user. Okay, so the username didn't get passed in. So I think for to save that username, we actually need to override the device controller. So to get the username to save in the Rails app with device, we need to add this bit of code into the application controller. So it's pretty simple. You just add another signup key, which can be the username. You also need to add this method to override the authentication. And we're gonna use login. Okay, we also need to add adder accessor login up here so that we don't get this error in the view. And after that, we'll be able to log in to our account. Actually, I'm just gonna go and create a new account I'm gonna call it, just call it indigo. Sign up, okay, email can't be blank. Now we should be able to sign up for a new account. Click sign up. Okay, and now we're in here. So now at this point, I wanna show a new home page instead of the landing page. So that's pretty easy. If we go into the routes, all we have to do is add this one bit of code with device. And now we're able to set a different route to be the root of the application for when a user signed in. So I set it to the post index, which we don't have this yet. So let me go and create that. And this post is gonna be the model that we use. So 
I'm going to go into the terminal and I'm going to type in Rails G scaffold post. And the post is going to have a few attributes just the same as they have on Twitter. So what we're going to do for the body of the post, I'm going to do type rich text, which is a cool addition to Rails that allows us to have a, a more advanced text editor where you can add in images and bold text and all those cool things as well as a body we might do an image we'll just start off with one image or actually i guess since we have it as rich text we can just use that and post is also going to belong to user so i'll do user belongs to and then we can generate the post and i'll migrate the database and we can start the server now we get to the post page and everything's a bit spaced out. So let me go and style that up a little bit. A little bit. So if you go, I'm going to collapse these files so it's easier to see. And then I'm going to open up the app folder, fuse, go to the post, the index. And right up here where it says width full, I'm going to add a max width and then some margin. So that'll push the post form over. Now we can go and press this. Okay, and then we're getting this error uh, about action text because we need to go and run Rails action text colon install. This will create the migrations for action text. And then we can migrate the database, start the server again, and everything's fixed. And now we see this new post page. Now I can create my new post. This is my first post. And then we'll also see that there's a field for the user. We actually don't want to have this here. That was just added because we did the scaffold. So if we go over to the post folder into the underscore form file. You can see that there's a field for the user ID. We can just delete that. And then also go into the controllers folder and let's remove it as one of the post params. Because over here we're permitting a user ID but we don't want to allow a user to be able to set that user ID. Instead, up in the create action, where we're doing post.new, instead, we can do current user.post.new, and that will create the post as a child to the user. But I don't think we set the relationship because I just did the scaffold for posts, and it doesn't automatically set the relationship in the user model. We have to go into the user.rb and set this relationship. So I'm just going to do it up here. Has many posts. Now if you refresh, I'm going to create my first post. Create it and then it just brings us to the show page. But if I want to go back to posts, now it shows my posts and also shows everybody else's posts. And you can see that shows the user ID right down here. We probably want to change this to actually show the the name of the user, the username of who posted it. We'll see right here that we can see the user's ID is still printed here. We can change that to a better message that shows who posted it. So if we go into the post folder, there's an underscore post.html file. Inside of here, we'll see here's what was doing that. So we can change this and I'll just add some text posted by instead of user ID, it'll be the post dot user underscore username. And to set this up, we need to add a delegation method on the model. So go to the models and the post RB and we can delegate username to user and then prefix true option. And this will allow us to do this. And now it says who it was posted by. And it says the post. We also don't really need the body. Because we can assume that this is the body up here. And we can even make it a little bit bigger. So we have this post. And then there's also these buttons to show and edit. So realistically, we don't really need the show, the show option, right? And then we also have this edit option. But we only want to show this if the user is actually the one who posted it. So we can add a condition here 
if current user equal to post.user, then we'll show the option. If not, then they're not going to see that edit link. So I do see the edit link because I'm the one who posted it. But if we go and create a new incognito window, we go to the same local host, we won't be able to see that. So I'm going to sign up with another account. So I'll create that. And then if you see, I don't have the option to edit it, but on this screen I do, but I'm still able to create the new post. So this is my post. I can create it. And then I probably don't even want to go to the show page after I create the post. I just want to go back to this post page of the index. So what we can do is we can go and change the in the post controller. After the post is saved, we'll see that there's a response to redirect to the post URL. All we have to do is change this to plural post path or post URL. We can just do post path. And now when we create the post, we'll see that that was right. Now, one thing I'm noticing is the nav bar, we probably should add more padding so that it doesn't get in the way. And actually what we want to do is I want to add fixed and top zero. Or actually not fixed, I want to do sticky. And that way it should, it should take up space, but for some reason, oh, because I set a, a width of eight, but I should be doing something like 16. Okay, there we go, that's a bit better. I create a new post, we can go home. And then if I was the one who created the post, I would be able to edit it. Now, one thing I'm noticing right away is that my posts were newer, but for some reason they're showing up at the bottom. So we can make sure that the posts are showing up correctly by changing in here where we're setting posts, this variable to add posts, and then we're gonna be iterating them over them in the index. So in here in the controller, we can change post.all and we can add an order created at descending, which means it's gonna order it in a way that the newest posts show up first. And now if we see, we're able to see uh, my post first, which, which they were newer. And also over here, I'm, I'm able to see this user's post. Another thing that I wanna add real quick is the time. So we can go back to that post and I'm just gonna copy this piece here and I'm going to change this to posted at and then we can do the post.created at and we can use this cool helper that's added in rails time ago in words which allows us to pass in a date and it'll neatly add some text that'll say posted at or actually it'll be posted that ago because it gives us the time oh, whoops I put it inside of the ruby so if we do it like this, that'll say posted two minutes ago. Now, if we create a new post, it'll say it's posted less than a minute ago. This is very cool already. We already have the scaffold of this Twitter like app. The next things that we're going to want to do is add some functionality to limit what posts you see on the index page based on who you're following and then also have the option to like their posts or retweet it to your own profile. So the first thing I wanna build is the like button so we can have users be able to like the post. So to do that, we can just add that into this post page. So right down here where we said, if current users equal to post user, but actually I'm gonna delete this condition about the show action because we're not using that. And also delete this HR. Well, that actually might be looking good, so I'll leave that just for now. It's, I think it's just uh, actually adding that line, so I don't mind that. But right next to this link, so I, this is if the user is the one who posted it. So let's add the else condition, and then that's where we'd add the like button. So actually, we're going to need to check if the user has liked it or they haven't that we might do something like if current user liked post now we don't have this method yet so we're gonna have to create it and then 
else. And then I would really just copy the edit link because that styling is not bad. Whoops. And I'll just change it to like post. Although I do want to add an icon, but this is, this is just for now. Just so we can see what it looks like. Okay, there's no method like post. So let's go into the user model and we'll add that method. We're expecting a post. And then right now we're just gonna return false. Or actually let's return true so I can see what it looks like. Cause I wanna see the link. Whoops. It's not showing, up. oh right. So see if, if it's not your post then it would show up the like post button. And then when you click it, it should like it and then it would change it to dislike button. So that'll be pretty easy. We just need to add in that like model and then we'll be able to replace this method with the real logic. So we'll go into the console and I'll do a Rails G model like and the like is gonna belong to a post and it's also gonna belong to a user. Just as simple as that. And then migrate the database. We can start the server again. Now we're gonna need a controller to post to, but actually what we can do is already we can add the logic here. So right underneath where I'm setting the has many posts, let's add has many likes. And now inside of the like post method, we can say likes dot where post ID, post ID. And then just say dot any. So if we're able to find a like by the post ID, then it means that this user has liked the post. If not, then they have not liked the post. It's just pretty simple, but that will work. Now we need, so back here, if we go into the post partial, we have the link to like the post, but we need to add a route to like a post. I'm gonna go into the routes folder. Now inside of here, we have the resources post. I'm gonna nest it inside of here. So we can add a block. And now I'm gonna add a resource likes only create. That's gonna create a controller, or it's not gonna create a controller, but it's gonna set up the route for the likes controller with a create action. Now we have to go create the controller in the controllers folder. Actually, since I nested it in posts, I was also gonna add a scope so that we can nest it in the folder too. Just cause I feel like it kind of organizes it a bit. So then you create a post folder because we did the scope and then a likes controller. Now inside of here, we do a post module and then class for the likes controller, which is gonna inherit from the application controller. Now I'm just gonna have that create action. That's the one that we limited to. And then inside of here, this is where we would uh, create the like. We just say current user dot likes create. And the post ID would be the params post ID. And I don't think we set up the relationship for the user yet. So let's go into the user model. Or wait, no we did but I don't think we added it on the post yet. So let's add it here. Has many likes. I'll add that right under belongs to. So now once we do this, we'll create the like. Now what I wanna do is I wanna replace that button with the dislike button. So actually what we can do is we can wrap this up in the partial. So I'll take this whole logic here and I'll just say render like button. And in there, I'll, I'll pass a user, which would be the current user, and then the post, which is the post. And I'll go create that like button partial. So out of here, we're gonna have to change this from current user to user. So if the user liked the post, Actually, if the user has liked the post, then this would be dislike. Otherwise, it would be like. And for the like, we can already do this. 
because we created that row. It's just the post like path and then pass in the post. And then I also need to set data turbo method post, which will make this link do a post request. And for dislike, it's just going to be post like, and then we're also going to include the like itself. Which I guess should get returned by the user liked post. So we might say like equals user dot liked post. And right here we pass the like. So I'm gonna go into the user model and instead of doing dot any, we'll do dot last. So it'll grab the last like, and then we'll be able to use it uh, inside of this partial. So this should be good, but I'm also gonna wrap this in a div with an ID. And let's do DOM ID post and then like. This way we can replace this uh, with turbo. And I'll just copy this. And now if we go over to that likes controller, right after this, we can render a turbo stream. We can say turbo stream dot update. And we update the DOM ID. Actually, because we're inside of the controller, we need to hard code this action view record identifier. Or we could just include it on the class. That might be easier. And then we can do DOM ID, the post and the like. Uh, we don't have the post, so let's actually set this post. This is a better way to do it anyways. But it'd be post equals post.find. params post ID. And then right here in this create, we can just do the from the variable. Now let's see how this looks. So if we go back. Uh, undefined method post like path. That should be fine. Okay, you know what? I need to. I'm gonna change this back to resources, and then let's also add a destroy route. Let's see if that helps. Oh right, because the destroy. Okay, now that I'm back in here, this one should have been delete, but I still don't see what's going wrong. Missing required keys ID. Oh, because uh, actually for, for the post, it should go to the plural. And then for the dislike, it should actually go to the dislike. Okay. Looks like I had a typo in here, where I was going to the post like path. But I meant to aim it at plural post likes path. And now if we go and refresh, we'll see that it's working. And if I go and press the like, oh, we actually, it replaced it, but I don't think, well, we should have had the other case. So I'm not sure what happened. Okay, let's go back to the likes controller. Oh, because I did an update, but I forgot to add the content. We need to add partial, and the partial is going to be. Oh, we're gonna have to do the path because we're in a nested controller. So we'll have to do post like button. And then we can pass in locals, which would be the post, and then also the user, which can be current user. Now this should work, right? So if we go and, we, and try to like this, now we see we instantly get the dislike post. But when we do dislike, it doesn't work. But we can fix this by, I'll just copy the create and then change it to destroy. But we can actually uh, simplify this because we don't want to have our code repetitive. So we can do before action for setting the post. And put this down in a private. Now we're setting the post before we do this and then instead of creating it on the destroy uh, we're actually going to find it so say 
like equals current user likes find and then like dot destroy then we render the turbo stream exactly the same we could also have this as a we could reuse this since it's doing the same thing but uh, i don't think we have to because this should work oh i'm pressing dislike it's not couldn't find like hmm Okay, there's a typo here where I was I was passing in a key to find, but you're just supposed to pass in the ID by itself. Now this should work, but it's still not working. Alright, I'm gonna do some debugging. Oh actually I need to add bundle add pry rails so I can do a binding pry. Now instead of doing bin dev, I'll do rails s, and then I'll do binding pry and destroy. So now when I click it, I'll go into pry, and we'll see what's going on. Like dot less. So does this post have any? Maybe we should do post likes where the user ID is current user.id yeah that looks like it works better so i'm going to change this logic to find the like to instead find off the post now when we dislike it actually dislikes it so now as a user we can like other people's posts we can dislike them and we can also edit our own post So we already have this really simple working skeleton of X. Now this is really exciting to do. I hope you guys learned a lot from this video and you found this very interesting. And I hope to create many more videos coming soon. So stay tuned. If you haven't already, please press that subscribe button. So now we have the basic setup for Twitter. We can sign in, um, we can post our tweets, we can have other people like the tweets. I'm going to do a few more additions. Like I'm going to add icons to the like button. And I'm also going to add retweets. But real quickly, uh, it's been a few days since I last uh, was on this app and making this video. And since then, I created a new gem to make these login pages more pretty. So I'm going to quickly add that gem. So to add the gem, we go into console and we type bundle add tailwind underscore device this will add the gem and then all you have to do is run rails g tailwind device colon views and this will add all the pretty views styled with tailwind that'll make the sign in page just look a lot better just like this and we can go ahead and create our new account Uh, one thing that's kind of annoying is that uh, since we just reset to the default device views, it didn't include their username field. But that's okay. We can just quickly add that back in. Now that we're in the code, you can just go over to the app, the views folder, device, registration is new. Inside of here, I'll just copy this top one and I'll change it to username. And we'll turn off autofocus. Now when we refresh, we'll see that we have the username field too, which is important for us. So we go create our new guy. Oh no, it's email field. I forgot to change it. So we need to change the text field. That's my bad. Oh, it's kind of annoying because we have to restart. Then once we sign in, we can go start posting our tweets. I love tweets. We can even add images. This is a funny meme. I was going to add to a video I was posting the other day. It's kind of large, but that's just with um, action text. And if we want to edit the tweet. Oh, doesn't Twitter not like to edit tweets or something? 
or not bad, it's X now. Anyways, and then we see the other tweets. We can go like, dislike. So quickly, I'm going to make this better, and I'm going to add... Oh, I forget. Does Twitter have a like button? No, they have a heart. So it's basically just similar as uh, the Instagram one. So let's add likes to the... So let's go and fix the likes and add icons. So what we can do is go into the posts and the like button. And then we just have to update this with an icon. So what we'll do is we'll change this link to, to be a block. And we'll put the icon right in the center. We'll go to uh, Hero Icons, which has a good set of free icons. And then what I want to do is just copy this heart. Do the outline one. It's probably, I mean, this should be fine, hopefully, right? But let's refresh and see if it looks right. Yeah, okay, it looks good to me. And then for when it's filled in, we'll just grab the solid, copy this, and then we're going to add it right here. So what I, was, what I did to make this a link is I just deleted the text, added a block, and then I'm able to add a custom content into the link, like the icon. So it's just an icon wrapped by a link. We'll see what that's, this looks like if we like. Now we see it gets filled in. And if we want to make this red, let's go into here and we'll change this class. Let's say like text red. Now we're able to like new posts. Now let's quickly add the retweet. So I don't know if they have, it's almost like recycle. Arrow will circle. We could do, we could do something like this. Or no, I like this one. So this is for retweet. So if we're gonna add that retweet button, it would just be right next to the like button. We could do a similar thing like render retweet button, pass in the user who's gonna be retweeting, which would be the current user. And we pass in the post. And we go and uh, to render this, we're, it's gonna look for a partial inside of the same folder. So we can make a partial underscore retweet underscore button dot html dot erb. And inside of here, we'd have some similar logic uh, like in the like button, but we'll just have to add this in. Uh, to start, let's just do an empty link. Let's just like link to uh, nothing. And let's drop our SVG and just so we can see what this looks like. Okay, so it just kind of, kind of shows up pretty ugly. We want to get these to show up in a row. So I guess we need to wrap this. So inside of this condition, we could just add a div with flex, new item center to center them horizontally, and then do some gap to, to put some space between them. Just like that, we have the retweet. I might do gap four to make that look better. And then I want to take the same styling from the like button I actually don't mind that styling, how it's set up. I think this might just be, that's definitely just like default Rails styling. Oh, but look at this, there's there's some sort of weird like margin thing going on. So I don't think we need margin left. Let's go to the like button. Let's get rid of this margin left. I'm just not sure why there's why it's uneven. It's almost like this one has margin on it or something. Flex. Is it the item center? Let me take that off for a second and see what happens. It's just like these buttons are kind of uneven. Oh, you know what makes sense is just the sizing could be slightly different between these icons. So we actually need to, instead of doing just padding like this, uh, we might want to do it slightly different. We just simply do P3. 
I do like having it the width be right. So let's just do height full width 16. How does that look? And instead of height full, we could do oops, height 16. Height 16 with 16, although that's going to be too big. How about height 12 with 16? Mm, yeah, I mean, we're getting somewhere. So now that we did the, the fixed height, let's do flex item center, justify center. This is just to make the SVG in the middle be centered. And now it just shows up like this. And they already look oh, exactly the same. But we can even copy that, the custom height and width, just to make sure that the retweet button stays like that. So we just replace the padding with the, the new height width and then with the flex classes just to center it. Now they look exactly the same. Uh, we probably want uh, when the person retweets it. Uh, well, actually, we could style this too, like the heart. I feel like it'd be cool if the like when it was liked, it had a maybe a red background or not background, a red border or background too. So to do that, we can look for which one's the like, which this is the one if the person has liked the post. So this is the like, so we can even add a comment here. So add a comment, you do it with the same Ruby stuff, but you add this pound sign to make it a comment. Say like, this is when user has liked. Now if you want to add a comment just to describe it. But I feel like it's pretty easy to tell. Then let's say I want to add that border. We do border to border red 500. Now it shows up like this whenever you like. Which it might be a little bit too much. You do just regular border, no border to. Although it kind of just looks like you're selecting it. Whoops. Let's try and set a border. We do. Let's change from BG gray to like some sort of BG red. Okay, yeah, I like that. You liked it. And then if you're going to retweet, that's going to do something else. So let's add that retweet model real quick. <clears throat> so let's go in the console and let's do a new model, or else you model retweet. Now retweet is going to belong to a post and it's also going to belong to a user. Migrate the database, and we can start the server. Then, if we go back into our partial for the retweet button, we're going to end up doing the same logic where we say if retweet equals current user dot retweets dot find, and then we should have the post here, so we can say post dot id. So if we can find a retweet. Although we probably want to say find by so it doesn't throw an error. If we can find it, then we'll show this link. Which was, this would be like the active. Like this is when there's a retweet and then this is when there's not. So let's focus on when there's not a retweet first. So we're probably going to want to go to some sort of like retweets path. Or how do we do it for the like button? We did post likes path, so that's probably what we'll do. Like post retweets path. And then we pass in the post. Uh, but one thing real quickly is up here we're saying if current user dot retweets find. Uh, so when we generated that retweet model, it created the model in the models folder. We can see retweet to RB. This is what the retweet model looks like. It has a class and then it has these associations, belongs to post, belongs to user. But when you do that generator, it doesn't update the other models. So it doesn't update the post model or the user model. So you have to do that by hand by going in here. And then you'll see at the top where it has its associations. You can just add has many retweets right under has many likes. And then we also have to do that on the post model. And now we're able to do this in the form or I mean, in the view back on the retweet button. Not quite a form, but just the, uh, the link that we're using. 
we're able to say current user dot retweets and then we can find it and then we can also create it later when we're in the console so now let's look at this path down here we added post retweets path so this is going to end up being a post request so let's add on the link data turbo method post which will make this trigger a post request but right now we don't have this route yet we don't have it defined so to go and set that we can go into the code uh, go in the config folder that routes to rb and then right next to the resources for likes we'll just do resources retweets only create destroy so we have two actions and it's really just almost exactly the same as the like logic although we're going to use it to display the retweets like on the person's page or actually will it'll show up in like higher up on the feed too so if you go into that into the controllers folder we have to go into the post folder and right next to the likes controller we make a retweets controller it's going to be class retweets controller inherits from application controller and it's going to be very similar to the likes controller where it's going to have it's going to find the post goes post.find params id we can actually put this in a before action now set post and then we'll move this down to private make a method called set post and that's where we'll define this post variable then we're in the create action we can say current user dot retweets dot create post id post dot id so we create it and then we just want to render a turbo stream to update uh, that retweet button to show the new UI. So it'd be very similar to how we did it in the like, how we wrapped it in a div and we used DOM ID. So let's quickly add that in the retweet button. Let's wrap this with div, we'll give it an ID, DOM ID, we'll pass in post, uh, retweet. Wrap this whole section of code. Now we're gonna be able to target this. If we render turbo stream update, and then we target the DOM ID post retweet. And we pass the partial, which will be the post retweet button. And we have to give it the locals, which will be user is current user and post is post. So that should be everything set up. Although for DOM ID to work, we need to include uh, this class up here. We need to include action view record identifier. So this is the, the helper in Rails that has this method, which we have in the view. But if you want to use in the controller, you have to include it here. Now that we have that set up, we should be able to actually create the retweet. But it looks like, oh, did I? Oh, I didn't wrap it in a module. So see, we're getting this issue because we have this controller in the post folder, but it expects a module, which means we create a module, we say module, and then we uh, do post, and we wrap it. And it's a good way to just like namespace it. But that's what it's expecting. So now we press retweet. Oh, we actually had something happen. Couldn't find post without an ID. Oh, did I say so back here in the method I I was doing post find params ID it actually needs to be post ID it's because of the namespace so you need to remember whenever you're namespacing it's gonna use uh, like the module underscore ID now we should be able to click retweet I think it did it actually did create the retweet but we just didn't have any styling uh, too bad Let's go in and do some styling on that reach tweet button partial. I'll quickly close all these. Quickly gets a lot with all the different folders. But let's go into the views, the post, the retweet button. And then up here when there is a retweet, we can add some some little bit of styling so we can make it green. We can also make the icon a green icon. Now see just like that we have the retweet now. And we can go 
and just retweet these different posts just like that. Although when we click to unretweet, it doesn't work because we haven't set that up yet. If we go back, we'll see it just linking to the blank URL. So to make this work, we're just gonna change the path to post retweet path. Then we're gonna pass in post and then the retweet that we set right here. But now to get this to work, we need to go back to the retweet controller and set up the destroy action, which can be pretty similar to the create, except for we're gonna be, instead of creating it, we're gonna be finding by params uh, ID. So say like retweet equals find. And then we're gonna say retweet.destroy. Or actually what we should do just in case, like how we did it with the likes, we should uh, destroy all of the retweets. So instead of doing find, we say where the ID is params, or not wait, where post ID. Yeah, this is the right way, my bad. Current user dot retweets where post ID. Well, the thing is we are passing in retweet. So we could either look for the retweet or we could just delete all of them. So that's what I'm gonna do. Just retweets where it is the post ID, not destroy all. And then we render this again. Oh, but we didn't set up on the page. We didn't make it do a delete request. So if you look at this link, it doesn't have any data turbo method. So I'm gonna quickly add that data turbo method delete to make it fire a delete request. Now when we click it, uh, we can undo the retweet. Just like that. So I hope this is really helpful. You're able to see how you could add liking and retweeting. Now one thing is actually getting the retweet to show up in this feed. And that's kind of more tricky because we kind of have to organize this, this model of how we display them. So if we want to get a retweet to show up with the posts. You know, it's going to be a little bit more tricky. We can try to uh, fix this real quickly. So we need to get it to show up on the post index. So if we go to post index, right? Right now we're setting it to post to all order created at the sending. But if we want to get this set up, if we wanted to get it to work with um, retweets all too, we could set retweets equals retweet to all the order creating at descending. And then we almost want to just like merge these together. Although the retweet is going to have more um, options on it. So it's kind of tricky. But we can make our own We can make our own variable called like feed objects. And then we can kind of loop over these by the created at and add it into the feed objects. So this is definitely not the best way to do it. It's just, um, I'm seeing what I can do. So we loop over the retweets. And we add to the feed objects. I think we would just add a new thing. Let's say we give it the created at. And then we could give it the post, which for the retweet, it'd be the retweet.post. And just be like that. And then we'd also do the post each do. Wait, I'm totally getting this confused. And then we'd also add to the feed objects uh, post dot created at. Yeah, just the post. And I guess we'd also want to like a type, which for this it would be retweet. 
And we also have the retweet object on this if we have retweet. And then essentially at the end, we would order this new hash of objects by that created that date. Which this is kind of one of those things where I'll just ask ChatGPT to do it. So we just simply do sort by. So at the end, we could sort by just a feed equals feed objects dot sort by the created at. This is kind of insane because I just wrote all of that without even testing. Just right off the top of my brain. It's definitely not the best way to do it, but let's see if we can view it on that index. So right here, we're just saying render posts. We probably actually want to say like feed dot each do. And then we could check, well feed call it like feed object and I'll we'll say if feed object type equals retweet if it's a retweet then we can add uh, just a label that says the person who retweeted it Let's grab that retweet object and we'll say uh, user username and just in case that retweet is missing let's add a safety parameter just in case and I'll say this user retweeted this post and we can also add the date that they or like the time that it was retweeted at by saying feed object retweet dot created at and we can pass this into the time ago and words method. And it would say something like posted five minutes. And then we could add a go to the end and then wrap off that span. Now we just have a little title for the retweet so people know it's a retweet. And then we could just render that post partial. The post being the feed object post. Now we just need to do it else. So if it's not a retweet, we just simply render the post. Or uh, even easier, we just put it outside of the condition. So it renders in both conditions because that's what we're gonna do. Oh, except for, oh wait, no, it does work because we use the key post. So it's really, we're just checking if it's the type retweet and then we're gonna add some additional data. Now, time to see if that works. Oh, it does work. Retweet it, except for, I think it's sorting the wrong direction. So if you go in the post controller, see how we're sorting created at? I think we need to do negative created at. So it sorts the other way. Oh, whoops. Do we not do it there? Dang it, ChatGPT was just telling me this too. No, that should have been right. We should have been able to just put a minus. saying no. <laughs> now it doesn't want to answer. Why doesn't it want to answer this? Well, I know an easier way. <laughs> Just say dot reverse. Okay, now we see oh, the feed's kind of crazy at this point. There's just so much going on. We probably could uh, combine these two into one line. So if we go to that post partial, yeah, I don't think we need posted by and then posted at. We should just do like a 
comma and then posted by them nine days ago right and we could even wrap this whole thing in a background just so it kind of sticks out a little bit all right there we go i like that more bg gray uh, and a little padding you could even make it lighter than this uh, whoops then do some sh a bit of a shadow px2 and then py oh except for it has margin already on y right here so let's just get rid of that it's like something like this and then we can delete the hr from the bottom too okay so we got a little bit more of like a style that we could have but still could use some improvements. Maybe do some PX on the sides just to push it out. And then let's do. <sighs> Sorry about this. Okay. Now let's do grid. Gap four to add some spacing. Or wait, can we say gap six? Although it's also going to push it between the retweet part. But to fix that, we just have to go, um, it's actually still on the index. <laughs> we just need to wrap this in a div, this whole little thing. And then this title could just have its own padding defined. It doesn't really seem to be wanting to do this. So let's give the div a class. It's a grid gap for. And then we could probably add more gap to the main container. You can try like gap 10, because I think Twitter usually has a good bit of gap. If you go, you see the post. Boom. If I want to retweet it, then I wouldn't want it to show up here doesn't automatically update but if you reload you'll see it does and let's say I want to retweet my first post we can reload and it goes up to the top now let's say we don't want to have we don't want to make you have to reload to get the stuff to update that should be simple enough right oh and we don't have delete working too oh you know what because there's two posts because we have the retweet showing up and then we also have like the one down there. Hmm. Well, we'll have to think about that. That's a good question for for you guys watching. How can we uh, fix our turbo stream so that if we do the unretweet, it actually updates in both places? Well, I don't really have to tell you guys this, uh, or I don't have to make you do that. All right. I can show you real quick. So what you have to do is instead of a class, or instead of ID, you do a class. So retweet button, instead of that ID, oh, we make it have a class, and then in the retweets controller, where we're targeting DOM ID, it's gonna, by default, look for an ID. But if we change it to a string and then we add the dot, that'll make it look for a class. So just make sure to, uh, to end it off just like this so we have a string and then it's telling it to look for a class oh and then also instead of update you have to just do underscore all and that works for any different turbo method so like append prepend you just say dot all and then it'll look uh, with the class but I think you still have to do the dot because it, it'll look for any CSS selector now let's see if this works yeah, we clicked on the retweet and it actually shows up on both spots. Now the like one isn't set up, so I do want to set up likes. If we go to the like button partial, just simple as changing it from an ID to a class. Then going into the likes controller and doing the same thing where instead of updates, update all. 
And then we do a string retarget the class just like a normal CSS selector and then do the same one here all right so now we're targeting the right thing so that like button should work too so let's say we retweet a post and we want to unlike it it actually unlikes on both and then if we do unretweet uh, it also updates this is pretty cool. We got ourselves a working Twitter already set up. And I feel like this is pretty simple. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you learned a lot. Let me know any new ideas for next videos and I'll be sure to work on them. I have a lot of new videos that I'm working on right now and a lot of cool things that I'm going to be talking about and releasing soon. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this and have yourself a good rest of the day.